I made the mistake of researching and writing this episode with my six-year-old daughter next to me. And at 8.30 in the morning, the pictures of the familiar orange and yellow wrappers on the screen proved to be the catalyst for a 20-minute session of her begging to have the subject of today's episode for breakfast. And really, as someone who's made her share of bad breakfast decisions, it seemed hypocritical of me to deny her. Besides, it has five grams of protein, so it's basically healthy, right? I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. But first, a quick message. The story behind is coming up on 100 episodes and also the anniversary of starting the show. I'm really proud of where this podcast has gone, and it's because of listeners like you who have supported the show in numerous ways. To show my gratitude, I'll be doing a Story Behind Gear giveaway in the Story Behind Discussion Group on Facebook. And executive producers who support the show at the Patreon page have double the entries. So if you're listening to this, the week it comes out, be sure to join the Story Behind Discussion Group on Facebook or become an executive producer by going to patreon.com slash the story behind. A popular commercial in the 70s featured two people eating their favorite snacks, one a chocolate bar and the other with a jar or tub of peanut butter. Somehow both of the snacks get combined, usually by way of happy accident, and the people say, You got peanut butter on my chocolate. Well, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. This was a clever marketing technique by the advertising company in charge of boosting Reese's peanut butter cups, with some sources saying they were capitalizing on people's abhorrence to the idea of combining peanut butter and chocolate. I know, it's hard to imagine there was a time when people were afraid of the combination. But when these two people tried their accidental creation in the commercials, it seemed like it was a match made in heaven. The commercials ran for years with different situations, but always one person eating the chocolate bar and the other person inexplicably eating from a jar or a tub of peanut butter, sometimes with a spoon and sometimes with their fingers. Don't get me wrong, peanut butter from the jar is delicious, but I'm not going to walk around dipping my fingers in the jar and licking them in public. By the 90s, these commercials were replaced with the tagline, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, and now the slogan is simply the word, perfect. But the old commercials still made enough of an impression that it was spoofed on Family Guy back in 2005 in the episode called PTV. Man, this chocolate bar is delicious. Oh yeah, I love peanut butter. I'm Officer Reese's. What happened here? He got peanut butter on my chocolate. He got chocolate in my peanut butter. But the real origin story doesn't involve any sort of car crash, and Reese's peanut butter cups aren't named after a police officer who happened to be in the right place at the right time. The real inventor was Harry Burnett Reese, who started working on a dairy farm owned by none other than Milton S. Hershey in 1917. He later worked in the chocolate factory and was inspired to create his own chocolate creations. His business was slow at first, making them out of his basement, but as business picked up, he was able to quit at Hershey's. In a this-would-never-happen-nowadays type of story, when he told his boss he was going to go into the candy business, Milton Hershey wished him luck, but asked that he use Hershey chocolate for his creations. He mostly made assortment boxes with chocolate-covered nuts, raisins, and fruits. But among his candy bars was one called the Lizzie Bar, made of caramel, coconut, and chocolate. Another was molasses and chocolate called the Johnny Bar. Both of these were named after his children, of which he had 16. But the one he didn't expect to take off as much as it did was the simply named Penny Cups, since that was the price they sold for, created in 1928, and which we now know today as Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. When World War II made ingredients scarce, he decided just to focus on the Penny Cups as his main product, due to its popularity and the fact that while sugar was being rationed, peanut butter wasn't, and the Peanut Butter Cups used the least amount of sugar out of all of Reese's other confections. We talked about in the story behind peanut butter that American soldiers fighting overseas were given peanut butter as part of their rations, and when the war was over, its popularity grew. In turn, Reese's peanut butter cups slowly started to become one of America's favorite candy bars, even though it's probably not technically a bar when you think of it. Others tried to capitalize on the success and create their own peanut butter cups, 
but Reese's specific way of roasting peanuts until they were almost burnt, combined with Hershey's chocolate, was still the favorite recipe. Nevertheless, Reese didn't want to take any chances and tried to claim the trademark on the term peanut butter cup, even going so far as to demand store owners stop referring to similar products as peanut butter cups. But when King Cup Candies brought Reese to court over the letters and supposed trademark in 1955, Reese backed down after losing the lawsuit. Reese passed away in 1956, leaving the company to his six sons, who disagreed over what to do with it. Eventually, they sold it to Hershey's Chocolate Company in 1963 for about 5% share in Hershey, which is worth about $1 billion today. Nowadays, Reese's found in Halloween candy stashes are one of the first to be eaten, if you don't have a peanut allergy, that is. As you probably already know, Reese's became so popular, variations include mini cups, big cups, dark chocolate, crunchy, white chocolate, peanut butter, cereal, and of course, Reese's Pieces, originally named PBs, which don't actually use the same peanut butter as the cups, but I haven't seen any complaints. Reese's Pieces came into their own burst of popularity following being featured in the 1982 Steven Spielberg movie E.T., when Spielberg couldn't use M&Ms like he had originally intended, and in one of the many rabbit holes I fell into while researching this episode, I found out not only are Reese's Pieces popular around Halloween because of their color scheme, but if you've ever wondered why it seems like you get more orange, it's because there is an actual ratio used in packages. 50% orange, 25% yellow, and 25% brown. Information for this episode was sourced from Atlas Obscura, Mental Floss, Business Insider, and more links, which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. This episode was brought to you by the Story Behind executive producers who support the show through the Patreon page at patreon.com slash thestorybehind. Thanks for listening. Reese's Pieces came into their own burst of popularity following being featured in the 1982 Steven Spielberg movie It. It? Really? No. 